welcome to another Sci-Fi Fantasy Saturday. You know, it's gloomy outside. Um, my neighbors are having their trees trimmed, so we've got a little bit of, you know, chaotic noise in the background. So what better setting than for what remains out of the basement? This is created by David Thompson. This is published by DVG. And in fact, I need to thank DVG for sending me this copy. Uh, very interested in this series. And they were kind enough to send me this copy. So thank you for that. And I thought, hey, let's do a little bit of gameplay on For What Remains. Uh, in keeping with the kind of odd and gloomy uh, atmosphere... You know, I've got a little bit of glare on the table, and uh, you know, again, apologize for setting this up, but, uh, you know, the my neighbors and the elements and my lighting just decided not to work with me today. So let's look at what, rem for what remains, and I'll put a um, link to my unboxing of this in the, uh, in the description below. But what I thought I'd do today is just a little bit of, of gameplay. Uh, this is not a typical setup. Normally you do a 3x3 um, a three three grid, so you're going to have nine of these terrain uh, tiles uh, on the board, uh, and, you're, and you normally have a bigger build-out. I just did, you know, a 2x2, two two, so, you know, it fits on the screen a little bit. Um, and just kind of made up my own scenario here. I, I've got each side has... Uh, basically eight points uh normally i think the the basic scenario is like 10 and those scenarios are contained in the um in the scenario book that you get with you know with the game out of the basement you can you know follow these there's an introductory scenario that's in the rule book and then there's uh, a campaign uh, set of scenarios that you can kind of follow and they they increase in value the one first one starts off with 10 and then you can work your way up to uh, to the big scenario, which I think maybe has like 30. Uh, and when I'm talking about points, I'm talking about, you know, in this game, you have uh, the value of the points is based on what level they are. So if you're a recruit, you get one. If you're a veteran, this costs three. And an elite of this would cost five. And I just put recruits of these on the board, as you can see right here. Here's recruit. And when you do, when you have multiples of of a copy, you know there, there's a symbol that you can you can uh, take a look at and see how the symbol uh, is different there, so that you know these will have separate you know orders or movements. That really more comes into play when you're dealing with uh, the AI. Uh, in this scenario, I've got the um, order, which is over here, versus um, the earthen which are over here. So these will be AI. They're set up over here. And as you can see, you've got, you know, there's a, a Geomancer with uh, with their symbol. And then there's another Geomancer over here with this symbol. So you can keep track of, of the different orders that they might get through the AI. When you're playing against the AI, they're going to have their own uh, card here which you're going to go down the list and say, are they engaged? Meaning, are they engaged in combat? Then you roll here and see what they do. If they're injured, then they're going to do this. And then otherwise, they're going to do orders. And in this set, this, I just kind of made up the scenario. So I really don't have any objectives. The objectives are usually going to be something that is specific to the scenario, like they need to get off the other board or they're trying to get to a certain location on the board. And so they're going to go towards that objective. Um, in this one, I, I don't have anyone, so you'll just kick, you'll just uh, kick up to the next one, which would be scavenge. I put some uh, scavenge tokens on the board just so th that uh, if we get to that, or you know, th that you can see how that plays out. And then the the higher orders are usually combat type orders that they're going to do something from a from an attack point of view. Um, I don't know if I'm going to play this full thing out. I thought I'd just go a few turns just to see, just to show you you know, how how this plays, and uh, I haven't uh, broken this out for a while, so I th I'm kind of getting back to some of the rules as well. It's not overly complex, but, um, you know, again, if you don't play these on a regular basis, then each time is can be kind of a new uh, venture. 
Um, what else do we have here? Uh, oh, when you're talking about injured, uh, for example, here, let's take a look at the Neithermancer. Uh, um, there's two tokens here because I have a veteran Neithermancer. So uh, they'll have two tokens. So when, when they get hurt or when, when they take damage, then you flip that over. When it takes damage again, that's removed. And now you're down to the recruit. It can take one more hit or take two more hits, I guess. It takes a hit. Then once th that side takes a hit, it's gone. Anybody that's played, um, if you played war games that have step losses, then it's not a new new concept to you there. Um other aspects about this game, uh, this is really kind of, a, it's a skirmish game. It's almost like a miniatures skirmish game put to counters on a board. Uh, but, you know, you really don't have miniatures because with this step thing, it, it makes it easier to use counters for that. Um, th there's different types of terrain. This is like difficult terrain, so that's going to cost more to move through unless you have some special abilities uh, like the... Um, like the Geomancer does, they have Earth travel, so they can go through stuff a little bit easier. Also, the uh, Wraith has uh, Incorporeal and Mist, so they can like get out of combat without a payment, uh, without a penalty, and then they can also move through some of these uh, like water and stuff without uh, without penalty. The um, here's water that's going to cost you more to move through. This is un, uh, you can't uh, move through this terrain wherever you see something like this. So and it, it's not just that box. There's a whole gray area here. So you can't move through that area. Uh, I don't see, I don't think I put any on here, uh, elevated, uh, areas where you can, you can climb up and you can get like an advantage if you're attacking down from, don't think I had put that on this board. Again, I just wanted to kind of throw something out that made it look somewhat um, interesting. You've got some difficult train over here. You've got some water here. And then you've got a big open space over here. Um, normally, you know, you have objectives in some of the scenarios. But normally you would have, you know, you get, you know, points at the end of the game for any any uh, scavenge tokens that one is holding. That's, that's kind of in the basic scenarios. Normally you get points for unit units uh, eliminated in a scenario so that's how you you would play till um till the end uh in, in the scenarios might have different uh end times or objectives but normally at the end you would count up you know if anybody has any scavenge tokens or how many units were eliminated and then the, the team that had more points would win um that's kind of at a basic level if there's objectives involved they have different victory conditions this is basically a um a token uh, game, I mean, a, a chit pull game where you're, you're going to be uh, pulling out your orders. Um, in, in this case, um, when you're playing against the AI, you take all, you, every, every, every unit has three orders. So since we have two Hellborn and two Geomancers, then, then the, they'll have six orders. And then you would put those in a cup to um, that you're going to draw from you for AI. So the, all these would be in here. And then you're going to draw out... Uh, a number of uh, orders uh, randomly or a number of chits randomly based on the number of units plus one that uh, that that's at the the easy level if you want to go to a more difficult level you can you you pull, put more of those in the the order bag here that you're going to be pulling these orders out each turn uh, so in this case I would probably I would randomly you know shake these up here and you would randomly pull out uh, five in this case uh, five orders that are going to go into the order bag here. So I don't want to look at them and then put them in the order bag here. I think I only got three there, so I need to pull out two more. Two more then. So so I have five in here now, so that will, that will see the orders that you have in here. Uh, for the other side, you know, you get to choose, you know, like when, for, for, I mean, if you're playing against an opponent, of course, you always get to choose, but for, um, against the AI, uh, you play just like a regular game. You're going to choose, uh, what orders you want to put in the bag. And so you get, you, you might want to look at, uh, and you get to put, um, uh, I believe it's three that you get to put in, in, uh, the bag. So three, so I would, I would decide who I want to move here. And just so we know what we got here, I've got carnage, uh, two different carnage 
that are down here. Uh, they are, let's take a look at one of the cards here so you can see what how this works out. They're just recruits, so they're gonna have a movement of five. They move pretty good. Uh, um, they have no uh, range uh, uh, for combat. They only close combat. They roll two die. And uh, so they, you know, no dice for range combat and um, defense is four. So the other side has to roll that number or higher to uh, to to hit them. Uh, they have horde assault, which means they can kind of like move uh, um, and uh, well, they can they, they can attack it together. So they get like a bonus if they're uh, if they're people like adjacent to them. And that's one thing that that in this game that you need to you know, be mindful of all the time is, you know, you have this book here, which explains each of the, each of the characters and, you know, the, the, your combatants and, you know, they have like the rules for them here on what they can do and what that means. Like the carnage here, carnage can make a close combat attack and add one die for each ally adjacent to the target of the attack. So you've got a little bit of, of explanation there. You also have these ability reference cards here, which is decent stock that's going to be able to go over and look at what like so here you got horde assault ability type close combat and tells you what it is here so you basically be referring to these a lot in the game and, and you have that of course for the uh, other side as well so when you're playing like in this case i'm playing against the earthen i've got their ability reference but i also have their book here if i want if if this didn't uh, fully explain what i wanted to do also you have when you're playing the ai each of the sides have um, an ai activation reference so this goes in a little bit more detail than just this card you can um go here if they're engaged this is the different things that they could do injure different things and orders and so you have this little ai activation card to refer to if you know just looking at this if you're not figuring out what this means here you can look here and, and it goes in a little bit more explanation of the ai um so we have the carnage we have the wraith uh which let's take a look at that and again you're gonna have three actions for each one of those but you're gonna take three total and put that into the into the order bag here so you'll see what happens each turn so this is movement uh five uh this is a recruit the, the wraith is a recruit so you've got movement five no weapon range close combat uh rolls three dice uh, has a defense of five. It has incorporeal miss. Incorporeal means it can kind of disengage without having penalties in combat, and then miss it can like move through stuff uh, without uh, without uh, using the uh, uh, terrain modifiers or, or penalties. So, uh, so you have the wraith here. So a lot of co close combat stuff here. You've got the uh, Neth Nethermancer, which are kind of like the battlefield leaders and kind of healers. Uh, we've got a veteran here, so uh, it, you look at this column because of the veteran, and plus it's got the extra uh, counter as well for you know step loss. It's got a movement of four, weapon range of five, uh, close combat one, uh, re range combat of three, and then a defense of five. And then it's got this transfer life and nether gate. Nether gate means it can bring in thralls, so you've got this other unit here. Uh, that it can bring in uh, these thralls to to get on to the, the to the board. Actually, I, I just have uh, huh, I don't know why I have the veteran on there, but uh, well, because I have a veteran uh, Nethermancer, so I guess I can have a veteran thrall. Um, and then it's got transfer life, so it can like within its weapon weapon range uh, range, ha, range. We're chasing wabbits. Um, it could take life from a damage an enemy unit and then add a heal one of your units. That's one of its kind of special abilities there. So as you can see here, there's a lot of variety and a lot of nuance to the characters. Uh, and there's, you know, there's three sets of these. Each set has two different factions. Uh, each faction has very unique characters within the factions. This isn't all the factions, by the way. I just thought I'd throw a little bit on the board here just to, just to, to see what it's like. Um, so you first, so you're going to make two levels of tactics here. Your, your, your first, your first decision is, well, your, your several levels, I guess, of, of decisions. Your first decision is what forces do you want to use in the battle? Um, and scenarios might lay that out of, of what the forces are for like when you're playing against the AI, but, uh, and, and you can kind of decide your build on, on some of these um, with the build points on how you want to lay out your forces. Uh, and you're, you're going to want to match that to what objectives that you might have in the scenario. Secondly, um, 
each round, you're going to determine which counters you're going to put in because the counters that you put into the order bag, um, when you pull those out, um, they're not going to be in there for the next turn. So you'll, you'll they'll have a turn where they're kind of in a cool down, and then you're going to pick what you have left over, put those in the bag. Then those other ones can come back for the for the turn. So the other turns, so you can't be you're not going to be able to put the same uh, order tokens in every single turn. They're, they're going to be somewhat of a of a of a recycle point where they're they're going to sit out for a turn, then they come back. So that's going to make a decision on how you're you know um, uh, marshaling your forces. You know w which ones you really want to have activities, and then this is all again probability. You're pulling stuff out of a bag, so it's it's a probability of what's going to come out and when it's going to come out. So you got to make that decision as well. Then you've got the 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 real tactical decision is once you pull that token out, where where are you at in the game? I mean, where wh what do you want to do with respect to that that uh moment in time, you know, cuz if the other side has moved into a location that you um that you wanted to move to, and you might you have to make a different decision for that. But that that's all the nature of of the tactical. And that that's really what a lot of you know, tactical games deal with is that decision, but this one adds a, uh, adds some more layers onto it of, of deciding how you want to get to that point. So for let's 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 say that I want to let's let's say I want to put um, you know a carnage, one of each of the um, well let's say I want to put two carnage in. So I want this one guy. Let's use this guy here. I want this guy to run over this bridge and grab one of those things. So I'm going to put two of these in the bag, and then. Um, Let's let's see if we want to get the Neth uh, Nethermancer over here so that they can kind of give some support to the uh, to the Carnage if need be. So I'll put a uh, Nethermancer in there as well. So I put those three tokens in, and then then the fun begins. Then it's a matter of you know pulling from the bag. So we would shake these up pretty good, and then and you can use a cup. Some you know some people don't like to leave the bag, but they give you a nice little bag here. Um, uh, I got little fat fingers, so it's always fun. So then you pull something out of the bag, and here we go. We pulled out this uh, Geomancer, which is, uh, which one is that? That has the little skull guy on it. So it's this guy right here. So I put this over here. It's going to go back in. Those that, the, for when you're playing against the AI, they don't like sit out for a turn. They can go right back in the cup. So, sorry, I don't, don't have the cup on the board. So they can go right back in the cup and be pulled anew. Uh, that's a little bit different than the AI than, than you normally do when you're, uh, when you're opposed. So they can go back in the cup. So then this guy can move. And uh, let's look at his stats here. He's just a recruit. He's got movement of five. Uh, but the first thing you're going to want to do is see what the orders are. He's not engaged. Uh, he's not injured. Uh, so then we go for the orders and then we'd roll a die. And so we got a three. So it's, uh, objective is use scenario instructions to scavenge, uh, three alter earth pay play, uh, two, uh, terrain markers. Um, in this case, well, oh, so he doesn't have alter earth. He's just a recruit, uh, alter earth comes in when they're a veteran or elite and so in that case i mean if, if he this was a veteran geomancer then there are tokens that you can put on the board of these different types of terrain so he can actually alter the terrain and make some like stuff difficult or make it clear or what have you he can you know modify the terrain to their their liking so since that's not there then we're just going to go here heal Move within a uh, weapon range of closest ally and heal. Well, there's really no button to to uh, to do there. So in that case, um, you know, there's there's no need to move on this person. So this person, I think, would stay there. That that's a little. I, I need to go look at the uh, rules there, but uh, he is within weapon weapon range of the near of a nearest ally. There is no healing that needs to be done. So I would say he does nothing on that. Uh, on that uh, round. So then we pull the next token out and we get another, a Hellborn. And it's uh, this Hellborn right here. So that would go, you know, back in the cup here. Then we roll for the Hellborn. And another thing too about these orders, you might want to keep a notepad or something when you're playing AI because they're going to keep these orders until the until they're, they've they accomplished it, until they've done what they need to do, either the heal or scavenge or, or what have you. They're going to keep doing what they do until 
uh, till they accomplish it. And so they'll stick with that order and just keep doing it and, until uh, they can't do it anymore or, or till they've uh, accomplished it. So the Hellborn here, we're going to have to roll orders for the Hellborn. So roll a nine. So they're going to go to Assault. Assault and Toxic Burst. Move to the most enemies within weapon range. Toxic Burst until defeat. So they're going to move towards the nearest enemy, which um, would probably be, you know, these guys on this side of the board down here. So um, these are just Recruit. So they get a move of five. So this guy right here, and I probably want to mark him somewhere that he's got the uh, Assault Order, this specific one right here, the one that has like the, the radiation symbol or nuclear waste symbol. So he's going to move five, one, two, three, four, five, uh, going right at the enemy in that regard. Uh, and he'll keep that order until he does his, um, completes it. And that means he's going to do a toxic burst until defeated. So uh, they're just going to keep pumping out the toxins and it's fitting because of his uh of his symbol there um next one we pull out an order and oh we get a carnage here and it is the this guy right here and so this will go off to the side of the board because this guy and i usually i set these uh off over over here i, I keep the the available orders usually on their card and then i set this off to the side which is off camera now and into the glare zone we've just entered into the glare zone there okay um, so we look at the carnage here and, uh, it's just a recruit. It's got five. I don't have to roll for orders because I'm playing it. I'm just doing the eye, but that, that raises the interesting thing. If you really wanted to go all automated, you could have AI play versus AI and see how that is. I don't know. Uh, I'll, I'll leave that to you guys. If you think that you want to do that. Uh, so he can move five, one, two, three, four, five. So he's going to move there. So we're starting to get a little bit close into combat, and we might have combat if if we draw uh, that uh, that um, this Hellbore's uh, token, which I don't know what's in here. They're, they're random. You know, there's three of the, of, the, of his tokens that are in the mix uh, in the bigger cup here. Who knows what was in the bag this turn? Uh, so that really kind of gives you some of the the fog of war of the game. So we pull out here, we get the Nethomancer here. So again, this is going to go off to the side, goes off the board into the glare zone. And if you look at him, he's a veteran. He moves four. So I would move uh, one, two, three, four. I'm going to move here, trying to stay in the middle, but give him some support there on this side of the, um, this side of the board. Then you pull out another token here. And it is that carnage again. So now I can figure out, you know, do I really want to, uh, do I really want to go for that scavenge or do I want to do some combat? You know, let's do some combat because, again, I'm not going to try to play out this whole scenario. I just really want to give you a, guy, a, a feel of how this sets up, how this plays. I really like the system um, for its simplicity. But yet it has variety. I do like that. Uh, I think the theming is interesting. This is his own created world. So I, I do like that aspect of it. Um, this kind of begs to have minis uh, just by looking at it. Um, the, uh, the, the boards are fine and the terrain is evocative, I guess, of this kind of post-apocalyptic world. But um, I don't know. The, the terrain, uh, I don't know. Uh, the graphics don't wow me, and I wish the boards were a little bit thicker, but I can understand the cost for the boards and potential for warping, and I can understand, you know, design elements for the terrain. It, it is usable, functional, and you understand what's going on with the block, with the, the boarded areas. Um, it's just, that's not my favorite aspect of the thing, but, but the counters are functional and they work fine for what, what you need to use them for. And I don't know how you would necessarily do the, the step loss with minis. Um, this works fine. And it, and this to me is closer to, you know, my war gaming sensibilities in that regard, what, whatever the heck that means. So the carnage, um, you know, can, uh, uh, can move and then, um, Okay, you only get one uh, action, so I can't do combat because he uh, I can't do uh, range because he doesn't have it. So I'm going to move uh, uh, one, two, three, four, and then it takes a movement to pick up a scavenge. So I'm going to pick up that scavenge, and I'm adjacent to attack him 
next turn if if need be i can't move and attack some some um characters you know have uh or combatants have like a charge or some special ability where they can move and attack he can't so he's got to move into place and then do attack so i'm going to move there i'm going to risk him getting his this hellborn's toxic ch shot thing here but um I think that puts me in a position to do accomplish one part of my mission and then do the the other aspect here i kind of want to get some combat in for you guys and i might just throw some counters down and do some combat just so we can see what's going on so then we get uh we get a geomancer who is that same guy who is trying to do a heal and there is no heal for him i mean there's nobody to to heal so again i think i just leave him and let him go there also as a thing in the rule i i believe i have to uh, go back and look at it on the ai that i mean you can always kind of do what's the best thing for these like there, there are some rules about you know that they're going to try to get the most favorable terrain and they're going to try to you need to play the ai like they would play do you know do something smart for themselves when there's a question or when there's a doubt um, but you can also, um, what I've done, uh, the, the, the few times I have played this AI is, you know, you can override stuff. If you, if, if something just doesn't make any sense and it doesn't look like their order, um, really has them doing what they need to do, uh, or what you, what you might do in that situation, you, you, you can make it tough on yourself, right? You're playing against the AI, you can make it tough on yourself and you can, um, override that. Uh, sometimes I let it just stand because, it's the fog of war, right? I mean, it's the situation where you know, you don't know what they're thinking. Maybe they're thinking of something else. Maybe, maybe they don't know where we're, you know, what what we're thinking, and so they're holding back. And so you can let it play out that way. Uh, and again, it really depends on the difficulty level and the challenge that you want to have in this game as well. So then we go to another token here, and we get uh, the uh, geomancer that is over here. So. Uh, that goes back in the cup. We got to roll orders for him, so we don't have orders for him. And he's doing the same thing: heal and assault. There's he's there's nobody damaged. There's nobody within range, so they're going to stay where they're going. Now that's a situation where if I wanted to kind of override it, I might move them a little bit closer so they can be in a position to support this guy in case he's attacked. But you know that's kind of the way I'm I'm playing it now. And then we've got I think we got one token left, and it is of all things it's this guy hey you're gonna get some combat I, I didn't plan that out you saw me put it in there you saw me do the uh i didn't do any sleight of hand or anything that's just the way it is so uh the the hell bore, uh, he's on this assault and toxic burst and so he is close enough to the enemy because his weapon range is two so let's take a look at that um toxic burst there that we have on here do, 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 do. Toxic Burst. The Hellborn must use Toxic Burst when making a ranged combat attack. The Hellborn cannot make a normal ranged combat attack. The attack affects all spaces within the weapon, weapon range and line of sight, including spaces adjacent to the Hellborn. If the attack covers more than one elevation, choose the effect of elevation. This ability has no effect against mechanical and earth characters. So, um, that's uh, Carnage is not mechanical, not earth. And so... Um, so so his weapon range is uh two so he can do anything within two of him so this is clearly within the uh, toxic burst of of that uh he his weapon his range combat is two so i'd roll two dice and the carnage's um defense whoop sorry about that it's all the all the stuff happened outside. We're we're getting in combat. If the, I, I did the I paid extra for these special effects, is four. So a carnage has four. So I got to roll four or higher, and it gets a hit. And it doesn't matter. Even though I'm rolling two dice, if I roll two hits, you don't get two hits. It's just you get a hit. And you know it's 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 it, each combat has basically kind of one hit. This the, the, between two characters is just going to have one hit. So I roll both dice here, and I rolled an eight and a ten. So this is going to take a hit. So this gets flipped over to that side and it takes a hit. So one more hit on that carnage and it is uh, out of commission. So there you have it. Um, you know, I might leave this set up. I might do a little bit of this a little bit later, 
but I just mainly wanted to show you. I'm glad we got to some combat because this is, you know, sci-fi fantasy Saturday, and I wanted you to see some some combat. Uh, you know, especially since I, you know, splurged extra for you know this great lighting and this uh, great sound that that we have going on here. Oh, it's it's winding down, so my video needs to wind down as well so there you have it this is uh for what remains out of the basement i hope that gives you a just a just a brief taste just a taste of what uh this game has to offer uh to see if you guys like this as i said if you like this theme this post-apocalyptic it's got a very interesting story I, I, I might do a piece on that at some point maybe i'll do that as a, one of my coffee with kilroys and just talk about this background and this theme and stuff because um, it's, it's more of a page turn right um but if you like the uh, post-apocalyptic and kind of sci-fi and uh, otherworldly theme then this might interest you if you like skirmish games uh if you like miniature games um but don't like the painting and and all the you know all the units you know, this is a, a interesting alternative to that as well. There's not there's not as many units. There's as many units as you want to do for a scenario, or you can make up your own scenarios. Um, and it has a very you know uh, sound, solid, simple system uh, to do things. And I also like that it has a built-in you know AI uh, as well. So anyway, that's my uh, sci-fi fantasy Saturday. Uh, you know, your time is precious, so thank you for spending any, uh, whether you watched it for a second or the whole thing, thanks for spending some time with me. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for watching.